The Da Vinci Art Alliance is an artist cooperative organization in uh, South Philadelphia. We were formed in 1931 by a group of Italian American artists and artisans. Oh, the Da Vinci Art Alliance, the importance of its uh, establishment in the facility is just really goes without words for artists like myself who are trying to express themselves and give to the community and the world uh, a statement that we all feel we have to make. Um, having or being um, attached to a gallery is very important for an artist because you will not be able to show your works if you're not affiliated or associated with something. So this being a nonprofit is probably one of the best um, ways for a up-and-coming or even an established artist to continue to show their work. Every month we have themed shows. Uh, since I've been president, because I'm an educator and professor of art history, I like to do shows that have some kind of educational component. Andy Warhol is very special as an artist to me growing up in New York. Of course, I always followed him. I couldn't wait for my father to get home every day so I could see the paper and see what Andy was up to that day, what new films he was showing, what art uh, exhibit he had. And uh, he was always just so present, you know, everywhere uh, on the scene. So every day, Andy Warhol was mentioned in the New York papers. Uh, the exhibition uh, Warholized features the artwork of 36 members of the Da Vinci Art Alliance. Uh, the theme of the exhibition is the influence that Andy Warhol had on them individually as artists. Well, Andy Warhol is special to me personally because I gravitated to his work again as a very young child. I was born in 1963. Um, I was able to stay up late at night with my father and watch PBS programs and things like that and I would always see uh, these clips and um, again video scenes and um, newsreels of Warhol and his whereabouts and his entourage. Well, this year is very important in Andy's history. It's, first of all, the 25th anniversary of Andy's death, um, so the silver anniversary. So we decided to do a tribute to Andy and call it Warholize the Silver Show to show uh, his, not only his early uh, influence on the world, but also the afterlife of his style to, that he still continues to affect and to inspire and to influence contemporary artists. So what this show is, is um, our current membership, who uh, all created works that were an homage to Andy or that were influenced by his work. And this is also an important year because not only is it the 25th anniversary of his death, but it's also the 50th anniversary of the soup can. Uh, so his first uh, silk screen on the soup can was done in 1962, so very important year 2012 for, uh, for Warhol aficionados. We had a wide range of interpretations of Andy's work. Um, most of the artists, of course, went for his famous pop imagery. The way I decided to install the show was by grouping uh, conceptually and according to the themes. But uh, I found that a lot of our artists, you know, really focused in on the consumer products, the kind of 20th century American still life, um, all of the products that people are familiar with that we use on a daily basis. One of the reasons why we've taken on the theme of the exhibition is to highlight all the, the influences that he's had on, on the visual arts, film. Uh, performance, uh, music, uh, design. He's just uh, one of the, the modern masters of, of contemporary art in, in the United States and in the world.